This is MJ. I love comics, and right now I want to talk about vintage Marvel comics. Previously on Swinging Through Comics, uh, I talked about Captain America number nine, and this is vintage Captain America 1941. Uh, 1940. This 1942 issue is dated to have come out January, uh, January 1942. I don't know if that's true, if that's actually when it came out, because apparently that's like not how it actually works. Okay, anyway, whatever. Um, so, the thing is, I was complaining in that issue that the pacing was all wrong, and I think issue 8 and 9 were both, had nothing to do with the war effort at all. And again, I don't know if this is because of Pearl Harbor, which happened December 7th, 1941, or not, because maybe things were already in production. But uh, I find it interesting, and I, 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 I don't know, I like cute names. So, uh, this uh, comic, this Captain America comic, features a story about uh, a Nazi, a hound, and a hotel, and uh, I just think it's kind of funny, um, because the, you know, anyway, I, I guess that's a lame joke, it just, it seemed like a really good title to come up with, and I wanted to talk about it, but that's dumb, because it d detracts from the larger point, which is how good this actually is, and I will, I'll focus on that, so um, I would say I don't really have anything to complain about in this issue. Uh, the art was all much better and much more consistent. There were still a few janky faces, but there were interesting things that were happening here. Um, I guess I should focus on the fact that, once again, this is uh, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby doing, doing the work, doing the art, or doing the art and story. But I find this interesting note. Uh, so on the page one of the issue... Uh, we've got Bucky with a janky face or janky eyes, um, but it says here next to Cap, as narrated to Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. Then I noticed later from another page, uh, or from the third story, the third Cap story in here, Captain America's, so this is, uh, there's a manila folder um, that you'd put like in a file drawer, or filing cabinet. It says uh, number 382-F, Captain America's choice for the spine chiller of the month taken from his own personal files. Spine chiller of the month. So I had talked last week about, or last time I, I discussed this in, in uh, Swing Through Comics 39, that I think they should just come up with a formula where it's a war story, a crime story, and a... Uh, horror story, suspense story, and I, I guess really it's a thriller. Okay, mystery. That's what it was. It was, uh, I want to see war, crime, and mystery. War, crime, mystery. Every single issue of Captain America comics should just be war, crime, and mystery. And at this time, Timely Comics had been doing, well, I don't actually know how old they were, but it was Atlas, then Timely, then Marvel, and they had been doing comics for some time. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and then they, you know, shift into this, you know, war propaganda comic in Captain America comics. And I guess it took them time to find their footing because we saw, uh, like a different flow, but regardless, I was complaining about that and how they really needed to solidify, just do a format of that. Uh, because we had two issues in a row, eight and nine, that basically featured Scooby-Doo plots and monsters and stuff. And I just, I couldn't understand why, but interesting, this issue, uh, which I will go back to my attempted joke features, uh, you know, the comic collectively could have called, been called the Nazi, the Hound, or the Ghost Hound in the hotel. And the interesting thing is, we have a Nazi spy, we have a Ghost Hound, which is trying to scare people away from a property so that they can't inherit it or something like that. And then we have a hotel, which is actually um, not full of criminals, it's full of fifth columnists who are trying to help bring down the United States and help the German or Axis power. I don't know when the Axis. Uh, officially formed, or if they ever officially formed and called themselves anything, uh, but that's what we called them. Anyway, that, and, and that's just from my, you know, cursory knowledge of U.S. history and World War II and whatnot. But anyway, uh, so we've got all three right here in this issue, and this issue had some, like, searing, uh, <laughs> I don't know, some searing heat, searing act, like, it was fantastic. I loved it. I loved, uh, this is probably the quickest read I've ever done through a Captain America comic, um, and I just had such a great time with it, uh, and I should probably get into that. First, I'm going to go talk about the covers real quick. I didn't try to guess what would be in this issue um, at all. I, I did remark, though, or it did seem funny to me, that once again, we had somebody from, like, the upper right-hand corner shooting 
uh, a gun or holding a gun and pointing at Cap. And um, yeah, I didn't try to divine anything out of it other than I saw that it said Hotel a Horror Register of Death. That made me chuckle. Um, uh, yeah, I just found that fun. So anyway, continuing on. Uh, then this, I love this splash page, this first splash page with Bucky and Cap on this uh, motorcycle. I don't know if that's supposed to be a German Nazi motorcycle or what, but it's got a machine gun mounted on the top of it. It reminds me of some of the scenes that we get to see of Cap, I think mostly in Winter Soldier. No, he, he does it in both. Uh, one and two where he's riding a motorcycle and it just looks so good. I love those World War II motorcycles. Those are the best. I say those. There's probably a few different brands that I've seen or that have been in movies. Like I'm thinking of the uh, the Last Crusade, Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, uh, and then obviously the first Cap movie. Um, and I kind of feel like did he steal in Winter Soldier the motorcycle from the museum as well as his old outfit? I can't quite remember, but anyway, regardless, doesn't matter. Um, it just looks so freaking good. Bucky's face is the worst part of the image, but. You can barely notice. Uh, no, it sticks out even all the way back when you're when you're pulled out looking at it from afar. But I mean, Cap looks great. Bucky, other than his eyes, looks really fantastic. The bag, like they're jumping off a hill, and the the side, the saddlebag or whatever, like kind of flipping up. Great motion. Then you've got this interesting lady, delicate lady with uh, her green dress and her red, uh, you know, head wrap. Um, you wonder what she's all about, and then you learn. Uh, what exactly she's about. She's this spy that they're talking about. Uh, I don't even know what the secret cargo was that they were transporting. It doesn't really matter. It was just a MacGuffin, really. And uh, it did its job and, and got things to, you know, be interesting. Um, oh, funny, funny, funny. I did not notice this. The splash page for the uh, Hotel of Horror is almost the same drawing or composition as what they had in uh, the on the main cover, which I find interesting because I thought that, well, it did seem to me, it had a double page spread just like in the last issue. No, this is not a double page. The, the hound was. Anyway, I, you would think it'd be more prominent by the fact that it's featured here, but, um, I don't know. Interesting. Just kind of rambling. Um, at this point, Cap's face looks pretty jank, but yeah, no, it's pretty bad. looks like it was rushed. Um, like really look at Cap's face here. What happened? Was that the inker? Was that the colorist? I don't know. I don't know the process. Uh, it's pretty opaque as far as, you know, I can tell or any resources I've tried to look at. Ooh, this, this is nasty. So here's actually a great detail that I don't know if it was purposeful or accidental or what happened, but in the Hotel of Horror splash page, let me see this guy. You can't see his arm, can you? Okay, so he's got bony hands on the very cover, but on the splash page for Hotel of Horror, uh, it looks like he's supposed to be a skeleton and then maybe the colors changed it or like, you know, maybe Kirby had gone overboard making a skeleton like no, no no he needs to have flesh all right well let the colors fix that um because it's you know flesh colored instead of white bone colored pallid like a skull um but still cool 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 splash page interesting details i mean as i'm zooming in or looking more closely i'm zooming in on my phone uh but if you were to look more closely there are some interesting details uh like one of these green hooded guys is actually touching this steaming hot blade um that's kind of weird. <laughs> anyway, I uh, just thought that was a fun detail that it was uh, this composition basically was what was used for the very front cover of the book or magazine. Comic magazine. And then uh, again, we have another... Uh, no, I, that, that's the detail I uh, had featured earlier. So this last story, it's got a double page spread opening. I think uh, it, it seems like uh, every issue they try to do at least one and they have done a couple for these mystery ones where it does a full page spread and it shows like all the players in it and then Captain Bucky and then something dangerous happening. Uh, but I really like the way this worked. The sequential art in it was really good. You know, we get this main, I'm going to call it the main scene of action where the hound is lunging at Captain Bucky. Looks really great. Uh, and then underneath we have uh, five little boxes that tell a story uh, and they're really good sequential art. Um, I was using the guided view and uh, it, as you sweep through the page, it goes, it, you know, it shows overall and then it zooms into those. Uh, and that was really neat. And then I thought the like art on this hound was kind of funky at first, but it's actually purposeful. It's just what they made the guy look like. And if you were to read the issue, you would understand exactly why. Um, but just, I, don't know, I, I love how bombastic and silly it is. Captain America and Bucky roam the bleak windswept moors on the trail of the dog who walks like a man. My only regret about this story is that they showed the dog man in the suit holding a gun from, you saw his, his costumed 
arm and then him holding the gun from one angle. But I wanted to see him in his full regalia holding the gun, pointing it at, you know, them or at the camera or like the viewer. Uh, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. But this was a fun story. Um, kind of simple. Another, this was very Scooby-Doo. Um, you know, this uh, Hotel of Horror was our thriller. And then we had this great, you know, spy war story. And then uh, I have, uh, I took note of this. We've got this image of the unbeatable three. Unbeatable because you can't beat heroes like the Destroyer, Captain Terror, and the Thunderer. Uh, the Destroyer and the Thunderer, I'm pretty sure, both show up. I don't think Captain Terror does in the Spider-Man 90s cartoon, um, which uh, there's a episode featuring Cap or a couple, like a mini arc of like, I don't know three to six episodes featuring Cap and Red Skull and all this cool stuff and then these old heroes and uh, that was super neat. I uh, really liked those episodes as a kid and apparently they stuck in my mind. I, I did watch them like two years ago um, but those episodes stuck in my mind. Uh, the images of those characters too because here they are. The, these The Destroyer and Thunder I'm pretty sure have like, you know, their suits are iconic enough that I'm pretty sure I remember uh, or they caught my attention immediately as I was Turning the page is what I meant here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Captain Terror did not show up there because I don't recognize him. Anyway. Uh, so, other than to say that I really enjoyed uh, this issue, I'm not sure, you know, there's little art complaints here and there, but there's some art that's fantastic. Cap and Bucky crash through a door or a wall or whatever, um, and as they're flying off the bike, the door is splintering and shattering into a bunch of pieces, and there's this, you know, Nazi soldier... Um, you know, reeling back and trying to protect himself from getting hurt by the, you know, impact or whatever. Like, that's a great shot. Like, it's just, it's fantastic. The composition of it, uh, everything, the coloring, it's, it, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's, it's so full of motion and weight and impact. Um, that it's great. And it's just one little moment, just one little panel, uh, leading into, you know, a bunch of other action. It's really cool. Um, I was really pleased with this one. I, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, they got the formula right. Um, I do want to draw attention to, I like that there's like some subversion of things here. This lady spy Nazi, um, she like chokes Steve as he's coming to help her cause she's, you know, running a ploy or whatever. And, uh, he's like, oh, miss, uh, you know, are you okay? No, but you will soon be. Um, or like, uh, it was the other way around cause she wouldn't have said you'll be all right soon. Um, but it was cool because she lays this ambush for any soldier that comes by and then she's able to get the drop on him basically but then he ends up fighting off these thugs she throws a grenade at him which is pretty crazy um and then like he comes out of the he's like lurking uh as he's changed out of his you know army uniform into I guess, into his captain america suit and he goes after her but they do this really interesting thing where he's like lurking in these trees and like there's real heavy shadows on him and i noticed uh, in this issue, there's a lot of interesting scenes where he'll be like chest and head or chest and face and like an arm or two. He'll be, you know, pointing or, you know, throwing a punch or something and he might be, uh, like heavily shadowed and it looks really interesting and it gives kind of a sinister vibe to him that I really appreciate. Um, something I don't know that I grabbed an image of. Oh man, he's got this great line. You na you Nazi rats have had your fun. Now try my brand of humor. Just like, he looks totally unhinged and so ready to tear into these guys. I love that ferocity and that viciousness in him. Um, it's just really fun to see because he's like, you know, he's a good guy. Um, he's a little bumbling as Steve Rogers. He gets in these accents. You know, Sergeant Duffy's always at him or whatever. But when he gets to be Cap and he's in like a serious situation, he's always heroic. He's always brave or whatever. But like, I think it's been a long time since we've seen his righteous anger, which is what made me wonder if this was made or maybe they changed some of the lettering or whatever. But then, you know, what about the drawing itself? That would have been done before lettering, I believe, is the process. Uh, you know, after um, after the Pearl Harbor attack, and uh, I don't know, I just find that interesting. Um, is there anything else? We get a cap uh, shield throw a couple times in this issue, which is always fun for me. That's one of my favorite things about Cap, uh, and it's mentioned here specifically. And then, too, I, I love the silliness, too. Uh, I'm going to read something, and if you're not looking at the screen, you should, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's a it's a note. It's a letter. It says, Death to those who dared to remain on the moor. Tonight, the hound swears it. And there's three little dots that are supposed to be a ghost hound's signature. So supposedly this dog wrote this note and then put his signature on the paper and left it for Cap and the rest to find uh, as they're in this house because he's trying to scare them out of it, right? Anyway, 
a little ridiculous, a little hilarious, but like Cap and Bucky take the threat totally seriously because there's obviously something going on because a bunch of people have been killed in this moor, but it's just the idea that there's a, you know, a dog writing a note is hilarious. And actually Cap uses that, um, he mentions that later when he, uh, says like, yeah, I was figuring it was so-and-so who had actually done things because, you know, when's the last time a dog writes, let alone a ghost dog, uh, which is pretty fun. Um... And then I just wanted to, I, it, it's really weird how like all over the place the art can be. So there's this, uh, I guess in, uh, it's page 42, but it's page 11 of the ghost hound story. Um, Cap and Bucky are shocked at, I guess, seeing the werewolf or hearing the hound, uh, howling and, oh, somebody yelling for help, I guess. And their faces just, they just look so weird. Like, uh, I don't know what happened. Like the eyes... Cap's eyes are kind of too small. They're different sizes. The like uh, inking on his upper lip is super weird, and as well on his lower lip to show him yelling. Um, I don't know. I don't know how else you would have done it to make it look better. Like his form looks pretty good, um, but the details on his face are weird. And like Bucky's hair looks great. His mask is in a good position, but something about it, the way his mouth is agape looks odd. Um, and then I like the frame next to them. I don't mind. They're kind of like bendy and a little rubbery in the way they're running, but they're bounding over to help this person. And I like that. And there's a simple, like all the background and, and even the foreground really is green. And they're in this like light blue, um, black and light blue and, you know, just two-tone, I guess you, is that what you'd call it? I don't know. Um, like that looks really cool and really fun. So I, I would almost like, I would almost enjoy like more abstracted, more simplified designs as long as they're consistent because these more detailed designs are neat, but they're inconsistent. And it's really the inconsist inconsistencies that bother me because I know these guys can do better work than this. Um, and then like the dog, you know, the man in the dog suit looks weird, but I think it's supposed to look weird and ungainly. And he has an actual hound with him. And you don't realize that at first going through, you just think like, Oh, that hound is supposed to be a guy in a dog suit. That's ridiculous. And then there's the turn that, Oh no, there is actually a, a guy in a dog suit as well as a hound, a real hound. Um, covered in, I don't know, was that bioluminous analogy? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it's just, it's interesting. Um, yeah. So I really enjoyed this issue. I don't know what more to say about it. Um, I thought all the stories were super entertaining. Uh, Cap gives his speech about, um, he gives this speech about, uh, American, like the American spirit of uh, he says like of Lexington, like the farmer of Lexington and Concord, like that spirit is within all Americans, uh, as this, you know, spy lady is trying to do her plot. And I honestly wonder, was this in response to, uh, Pearl Harbor? I don't know. But, uh, like I said, again and again, I really enjoyed this issue. There were, you know, a small smattering of, of problems I had with it, but if every cap comic from here on out was at least this quality, I would really enjoy it. And that's to say, or that's not to say that, um, they all have to maintain the formula, but I think, I do think it's a good formula. Um, it gives you a little bit of everything and you can kind of spread things out and, uh, keep every issue interesting. And if every issue can potentially be someone's first, you want them to be able to come in, I think, to get that, um, that flavor of that variety and to, to enjoy all the different aspects of it. Cause I think C Captain Bucky work really well in all three contexts. Um, I really do. And like I said, again and again, I had a lot of fun with this. It was really great. Um, I don't know. I really enjoy these old comics. They're, they're a lot of fun and there's a lot good in them, uh, that people can neglect for, I don't know what reasons, but anyway, as I record this, we're in June, the month of July is coming up. You might want to check out my, uh, Captain America, um, shirt design or, you know, you can get on anything design through my Redbubble store. Uh, I really like the design. I think it's super neat. Uh, I think you might enjoy it too. You should, you know, give it a chance to check it out. Uh, I have links to the stuff below. Um, but I think it's cool. It's, you know, it's basically Cap Shield. I designed it in a way that Marvel can't sue me for doing it. And it has, uh, like a logo or it has some words on it that, you know, to me, um, describe who Cap is. Uh, I think it's really neat. So I'd appreciate it if you checked it out. You can get a sticker or shirt or whatever you want. Um, it could be a cool, you know, it's 4th of July. You like comics. You like the stuff I do. You like the design. Hey, you know, get it and, you know, uh, wear it. Show people. 
Um, but it's cool. I have it. It says uh, all around. It says defend the weak from the strong, unite against tyranny, and uh, fight for freedom and equality. And then in the middle of it, like the things that make Cap who he is, I think sacrifice, honor, patriotism, and courage. Uh, and I think that's really neat. I think it's cool, and I think you could appreciate it too. So go ahead and check that out. Do me a favor, check that out. Um, and uh, I'd like to see uh, Swinging Through Comics grow. I have a plan to do this for a long, long, long time, and I'll probably do them like every other week from now, from here on out. Um, and I'd like you to stay st stay tuned and check them out and uh, give me comments, you know, give me feedback. I'd like to know what you think about what I'm doing, about the format that I'm doing. Um, I really like the way I've been able to do these recently. I think that it makes the production smooth and fast and um, really enjoyable for me to do. It's a, it's a good workflow, a good work process for me. Um, so anyway, let me know what you think, please. Uh, I would really appreciate the comments and uh, any feedback you have. And let me know uh, if you've read, uh, you know, more or less cap than I have. Uh, like does does or if you've read more than I have of these vintage ones does it continue on like this from now on from here on out I don't know uh, I am gonna read issues 11 and 12 and then I'm gonna drop it uh, allegedly or from everything I've heard this issue was actually Kirby and um, and uh, J Johnson no that's the wrong guy that's the director uh, Kirby and Simon's last issue and then uh, they left it and I think they went to go work for DC or something uh, at that point, but again, not a comic historian, just a guy following the stuff and trying to really get into it and, and just take it for what it is. And uh, this was so far the best issue, I think. And uh, I hope all of them maintain this level of quality and maybe this formula would work well for them too, as I've said before. Uh, but that's uh, pretty much all I have to say, so. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, and share to help me grow. Don't forget to subscribe to keep current with each release. Chat with me on Twitter at MJ underscore scribe. Visit mjmunoz.com slash podcasts to find the multiple feeds in which I analyze Star Wars, Tokusatsu, comics, and more. Visit mjmunoz.com slash support for links to my Redbubble and coffee pages so you can help me keep doing the things I do. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Until next time, be well, and may you find the strength to be the hero you needed in your most desperate hour.